zombies. Um, well, there is a sense today in which zombies uh, exist in the form of our classical digital computers and robots. Uh, that uh, Deep Blue can beat all of us at chess, but to the best of our knowledge, Deep Blue is not a subject to experience. Deep Blue would not play better chess if it experienced uh, anxiety, if you put its king in check, or, or, or something like that. And Likewise, in the realm of robotics, one can see uh, something like Alpha Dog and various uh, uh, robots. They are endowed, thanks to our programming, or in the case of connectionist networks, uh, 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 or neural nets, as they're some sometimes called, uh, uh, in, they're, in virtue of being trained up, they can respond adaptively to the environment, but they are not unitary subjects of experience and they don't suffer. Um, how is it that organic robots at least can solve the binding problem, i.e. how is it that uh, edges, shapes, textures, motions that are apparently distributively processed in our brain uh, by individual cells, features, how is it that they are combined into unitary perceptual objects populating a unitary perceptual field of dynamic figures in real time apprehended by however fleetingly a unitary self is an unresolved mystery. I think it's the greatest cognitive achievement of organic robots over the past 540 million odd years solving the binding problem as, as, as it's known. Um, one can speculate how this might be possible. Uh, personally I believe uh, phenomenal binding is a manifestation of quantum coherence. This is not uh, mainstream opinion. Most people would give uh, a classical explanation either in terms of modeling the mind-brain in terms of a serial digital computer or some form of connectionist, massively classically parallel neural network. Um, probably we won't want to go too deeply down this route, but nonetheless if we are to be reductive physicalists, and I am a reductive physicalist, by which I mean there is nothing in the world that is not captured by the equations of physics uh, and their solutions, then I think we're going to have to make radical adjustments to our conceptual scheme. Um, now, I should perhaps say that though this of itself is extremely speculative, if it does transpire that feature binding, phenomenal binding, the unity of perception and the unity of the self are manifestations of quantum coherence, uh, then this will, this, this is a, an empirical test, uh, uh, or rather it is amenable to falsification, that when we can probe the mind-brain at the intuitively ridiculously fine-grained temporal timescales at which macroscopic quantum coherence occurs, I predict we will find not computationally, phenomenolog phenomenologically irrelevant noise, but the formal structural shadows of everyday uh, features, macroscopic objects of our everyday world simulations. So this is uh, uh, a, uh, an extremely counterintuitive uh, uh, prediction that I would make. But as I said, here uh, I'm very much out on a limb. I wouldn't take this uh, speculation too seriously, but the binding problem most certainly is central to the uh, to the problem of suffering because without binding, essentially uh, brains would be essentially 86 billion discrete membrane-bound classical cells, little little atoms, so to speak, of mind dust. And though individually uh, these cells might have minuscule, negligible, aversive experiences, without binding there would be no suffering, there would be no subject of experience. Um, it's as remarkable if, I mean, consider the population of, 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 of the United States, it would be, uh, uh, the United States, to the best of our knowledge, is 500 and, uh, sorry, is uh, 230 a million odd 
discrete skull bound American minds and regardless of how they are configured uh, 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 you can imagine instead of neurotransmitters electromagnetic uh, beams re regardless of how they intercommunicate it doesn't seem as though there could be a single subject of experience. Now I, I can't prove this but if if in some sense a unitary subject of experience switches on this is inconsistent with reductive physicalism. I mean there is actually a a, a, a philosopher, Eric S, a German unpronounceable name, uh, who actually does argue if materialism is true, the United States is probably conscious. Um, but I think most people, as I was saying, would find this literally incredible. Um, but what I want to stress is that if our neurons really are classical objects, as most people seem to assume, it's no less incredible supposing that we are unitary subjects of experience uh, who apprehend bound objects as part of uh, a unitary experiential field uh, that is ap apprehended by a synchronically, synchronically unitary self. So this is I, I lapsed into jargon there, uh, two senses of personal identity, synchronic identity, the fact that right now uh, I am apprehending uh, dozens of separate objects, um, diachronic identity, identity over time, the fact that most of us, rightly or wrongly, assume that we are the same person as well, the person who went to bed last night and one's namesake five years ago and in five years hence. Now personally I'm uh, a skeptic about diachronic identity, identity over time. It's critical, presupposed perhaps by our uh, conceptual scheme and enduring metaphysical ego, but that's not the kind of, 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 of identity and unity I'm talking about. Um, the binding, the binding problem that we've been discussing is, is a case of synchronic unity. The fact that right now, uh, simultaneously, I presume that you are apprehending multiple objects as part of a unitary experiential field apprehended by a unitary self. And one way of communicating just how computationally powerful this is, is to look at syndromes where binding partially breaks down, whether uh, simultanagnosia, where uh, someone with simultanagnosia can literally only see one object at once, or uh, motion blindness, or technically cerebral achinotopsia, where uh, someone cannot apprehend dynamic motion. They'll see a car uh, in the distance, then a bit nearer, then right in front of them, and then passing them. Uh, and another uh, case where binding breaks down would be schizophrenia, some of the worst forms of florid, florid schizophrenia. So computationally extraordinarily powerful, organic nervous systems we know can solve the binding problem, we're subjects of experience. Many AI researchers assume that classical digital computers, your desktop PC for instance, when they become fast or sophisticated enough, somehow experience will switch on, they'll become subjects of experience. Uh, for reasons I've outlined I'm extremely skeptical this is the case. Tomorrow's quantum computers, who knows, yes that may well be possible, but uh, uh, your desktop PC or for that matter a classically parallel connectionist uh, uh, network, uh, no I think there are principal grounds for skepticism. Uh, no, it's, it's an extremely important question because, if, yeah, philosophy is cheap. What would refute this quantum mind hypothesis? Let's assume, and it is an assumption, but quite a, a plausible one, that quantum mechanics does not break down in the human brain. This uh, hypothesis, yeah, yeah, no collapse of the wave function or anything like that, simply the unitary dynamics. Um, if, when we can probe the kind of temporal resolutions which macroscopic quantum coherence occurs, all we find is, is noise, computationally, phenomenologically irrelevant noise, um, then it would refute uh, this hypothesis. And if it is refuted, as I said, I would be completely stumped. I don't see how it would be possible to reconcile the refutation with reductive uh, uh, physicalism, 
uh, someone like David Chalmers uh, uh, points uh, uh, uses this apparent structural mismatch between the phenomenology of our minds and our apparently uh, the classical microstructure of our brains. It steers him towards uh, dualism. Um, I think a lot of practicing scientists incline to epiphenomenalism. Uh, that's the idea that our brains somehow cause conscious states but consciousness doesn't have any causal efficacy which might sound attractive but the problem with epiphenomenalism is if it were its truth would forbid its own artic articulation because these epiphenomena couldn't by definition cause us to start referring to their own existence. Um, so dualism it seems to be a council of despair. Epiphenomenalism for reasons I just uh, alluded to, it seems <laughs> impossible to articulate. What are the alternatives? There is radical eliminativism about consciousness. Uh, Daniel Dennett comes perilously close to this, but uh, if you were to ask Daniel Dennett whether before surgery he wanted merely uh, a muscle relaxant to induce paralysis, or whether he would prefer, as well as the muscle relaxant, to have an, an, an anaesthetic. I suspect he'd go for the anaesthetic too. Um, so radical eliminativism doesn't seem to be tenable. Very, very few options, I think, uh, uh, other than this rather bizarre uh, conjecture that I was advancing earlier.